Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Ellie Stokes. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, um, Louise Conway, who's going to be driving the slides this morning for us. Um, and we also have um, Hayley Ledra on, on the call as well, I believe. Um, so yeah, we're part of the academic engagement team. And uh, this morning we'll be talking to you about detecting fake news, bias and misinformation. OK, so I'm going to be doing that uh, thing where I say to Louise every time, please, could you um, put it on the next slide? Next slide thank please. you. Oh, oh no. Yes, no there we go. Cool. Thank you. OK, so for this session, um, we're going to be looking at um, the, the, well, the things you're going to be discovering are uh, we're going to look at how to recognise the differences between fake news, misinformation, disinformation and bias. So, yeah, it's it's there's quite there are some differences. So it's really good to sort of really look at what those differences actually are, um, how to effectively evaluate information um, found online. So we've got a really good acronym that you can use um, to really sort of think about those questions to ask yourself when you're critically evaluating sources. Some best um, platforms to find good quality resources and articles for your assignments. And we'll be looking also at useful links to learning platforms and fact checking sites, because this is something that hopefully you'll go on to do um, and need to know how to do um, on an ongoing basis. OK, thank you. Next slide. OK, so question time on your screen, you'll see a, um, a web address. So menti.com and there's a code there so if you could just type in menti.com um, into your device or your um, your laptop uh, and you could type in that code there um, when prompted uh, and then we're going to have some questions yeah. on on your screen okay so you should be seeing this first question so this is an, an interactive section um, where are you most likely to get your news? So is it social media, Facebook, Twitter? Um, yeah, the code is at the top of the page. Um, it's 93177300. Uh, is it news websites, TV programmes or print sources such as newspapers? Be good to get a good gauge as to our most likely to get our news sources, okay. OK, so it looks like news websites such as the BBC is the uh, most most used um, for your news sources. Um, TV programmes, so BBC News maybe, and then social media and print sources. Thank you. OK, we've got another question. Do you have a go to news source? Which is it? So this is where you could type in um, your news sources specifically. Excellent. So it looks like the BBC is uh, the front runner there. Some really good answers. Okay, just try me on. 
Okay, so how likely are you to critically engage with your news? For example, visiting fact-checking websites or doing more research? Always, often, rarely or never. OK, so um, it looks like, yeah, most of the time, um, mostly it's rarely. So you're in the right place, basically. <laughs> um, so, yeah, today we're going to look at um, some sources, as I mentioned earlier, that are really going to help you with critically um, evaluating um, your news sources and, um, and going forward. So let's take it to the slides again. Thank you, Louise. So let's just look at the definitions because there are quite um, there's 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 four bits here that we're going to look at, but we need to really look at these definitions. So we've taken these from the Cambridge Dictionary. Uh, misinformation. So this is wrong information or the fact that people are misinformed. OK, so, for example, there's a lot of in, um, misinformation about the disease that needs to be corrected. So. There might be um, a lot of assumptions being made about something without any data to back, back it up or research being done. It might be unintentional, um, but it can lead to the wrong information being shared. So it, it can be unintentional is the, is the point to remember there for the, the misinformation. Looking at the definition for oh, disinformation, so misinformation and dis information. So this is false information that's being spread in order to deceive people. Um, so an example is an, an official disinformation campaign by the government. Um, so for disinformation, this is, you know, an intentional um, choice to circulate information that's false. Um, so um, may refer to theories that are just not true deceive people. OK, next slide. So fake news, you might have heard this quite mentioned quite often. Um, false stories that appear to be news spread on the Internet or using other media usually created to influence or um, the political views or as a joke. Um, there is concern about the power of, of fake news to affect election results is an example. Now, for um, fake news, sorry, Louise, there's a, oh, there we go. Sorry, my connection is not very good this morning. Um, so for fake news, these will always appear as if they're generated via an online news outlet. So the content will be fake and it's often spread via social media channels. So it reaches a wider audience. Um, so it might be about current affairs or political issues, or it might be something really silly. So um, it's often hard to spot as the news outlook might look genuine. So for bias, um, the definition of bias is the, the action of supporting or opposing a particular person or thing in an unfair way because of allowing personal opinions to influence your judgment. So an example there is reporters must be impartial and not show political bias. So bias, when we look at it from translated to an online um, to online information, um, it may be something that appears to be genuine, um, like a genuine article or a story. Um, and it may be actually um, an advert, for example, or a piece of work that's written to persuade the reader um, down a particular path. Um, but it can be difficult to spot, just like fake news. Um, but looking at the language used and the terminology is a way to uncover um, intentions. So those are the definitions that we're going to of, of the, the points we're going to be looking at today. But we have um, a really good acronym that really helps you to um, ask yourself um, those questions um, about critically evaluate this information. So 
So, yeah, critical evaluation. So, as I said, it's, it's important that the sources that you decide to draw on in your research are credible. OK, so we need to decide that um, when you're critically evaluating these sources, um, you know, the questions you're going to ask yourself. Um, so here's, as we said, a good acronym for, to help you remember. So it's prompt um, presentation, relevance, objectivity, method, provenance and timeliness. So we're going to look at each of these um, these uh, words and we'll and we'll look at exactly how we can um, really critically evaluate our work. So for presentation, is it clearly presented? Um, is the language appropriate? Is it succinct? Can I find what I need? Is it easy to navigate? Um, through, through the information, does it look um, does it look professional as well? Is is a good one. So for relevance, now does it meet your needs? What is it about? Um, this is quite an important one because I think it can be quite easy to sort of look across information at all sources and think actually yeah, I'll include that. But is it really relevant to your assignment? Is it worth including in your work? Objectivity. Now is there bias? So are there any hidden agendas? Is the language emotive? Are opinions being expressed and are they selling a product? So really think objectively about that work. Method. How was the data gathered? Is the research clear? What is statistical? What statistical data it, um, is it based on? Uh, and were the methods appropriate? So really look at, the, at how they've conducted that research in the in the piece. Is it, you know, would you say that the methods were appropriate? Provenance. Is it clear who produced the information? Where does it come from? Whose opinions are these? And do you trust the source? I think those ones just speak for themselves, really. And timeliness. When was it produced? Is it current? Is it still up to date? So have you have you got the most up to date um, study or most up to date piece of information for the subject area? Is there a more current piece of information that you can maybe use um, or is this actually out of date and potentially misleading? OK, so I'm going to hand over to um, Louise now and she'll take you through um, the next. Thanks, steps. Ellie. Thank you. look at some examples now of um, where we can see different outlets um, creating similar stories but all with a different slant so you can see this one is all about vitamins in coronavirus and these examples have all been lifted um, from online news sources but they're all talking about um, the benefits of vitamins with the coronavirus but they're all picking a different vitamin so you can see top left, we've got um, global campaign makes plea for vitamin C and COVID-19. Uh, then the BBC News talk about maybe uh, taking vitamin D to help with coronavirus. Then we've got vitamin K that I found in some cheeses could help fight COVID-19. A study suggests so you'd need to look into what study that was. Then uh, bottom uh, Centre, we've got a uh, COVID inspired study linked high vitamin A, E and D intake to fewer, fewer respiratory complaints. And then lastly, we've got B vitamins may help improve COVID. So you can see just from that small sample of online news um, resources about COVID and vitamins, they're all thinking that a different vitamin may have ben benefits. So that just illustrates the importance of having to or reading around the subject and really looking at those studies that they mention in the articles. Another example is or another thing to look out for is um, looking at how information is presented. So in these examples, um, we've got two of the same stories, but because of the different uh, publications and newspapers that are presenting those stories, they're portrayed in very different ways. So you can see the bullets say, is the title inflammatory? What is the language conveying? 
is there an agenda behind how the news is presented? So uh, we know that the Daily Mail and the Guardian are almost polar opposites uh, news outlets, but there may be some people that are not familiar with their political agendas. And you can see on the left hand side, the Daily Mail, they've got um, capitalised letters um, say without telling Her Majesty. So obviously they're, they're shouting that that headline. It's very um, emotive. Um, and the words they've used like fury and quit are quite emotive words, whereas um, the Guardian's take on the story is very different. So again, it's just paying attention and looking out for different um, different ways that the same story can be put across. Now, this is an interesting example. Again, it's it's things to look out for. So this is using a graph. Um, as an example of how it might skew your perception on things. So this graph is taken from um, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and looks at gun deaths in Florida. It's, it's um, you need to have a look at what information is pr being presented and how and is the information being portrayed truthfully. So at first glance, the headline gun deaths in Florida and the way that the graph is, is going up would probably lead you to believe that there are increasing numbers of gun deaths happening in Florida. I think that's true to say at first. That's how you would read the graph, that it would be increasing. But actually, if you if you take your time to really look at how the graph has been portrayed, you can see that on the left hand side, the numbers of the graph should increase as they go up from the chart. So the zero should actually be bottom left and the, the numbers should be going up. But they've flipped, they've reversed the numbers, they flipped them round so that uh, it looks like numbers are increasing. When actually, if you look at the figures, it starts off at 873 and it's actually dropped to 721 but because of the way that they uh, flipped the numbers around on the left hand side, it actually looks like it's it's going up. So um, it's just a clever way of skewing some of the information as well. So it really is another illustration of how you need to really scrutinise graphs and charts and, and things that are being um, portrayed to you. So just a quick overview of things to consider. Uh, things that, that, that we've sort of mentioned before, but they're good points to really have a proper think about. So really what you want to be doing is thinking about who wrote the article. Look at the source, check their credentials. Are they connected to reputable organisations? Have a look at website addresses. So uh, typically .gov, .edu and .org are more reliable organisations. So they would be uh, government organisations, educational organisations, um, .org tends to be a non-profit or um, charitable organisations. They may well have a slight bias, but um, you can you can hopefully think that the information you get is reliable, but you should always check. .com can be reliable, but do again look critically. So a clue is always in the website address. If you start looking that, that's a really quick way to see the source. Is the site biased? Um, look at the organisation. Do they have an ulterior motive? So you can start thinking if it's um, if it's something to do with climate change. Is the is the site uh, looking at a particular theory or trying to persuade you in a certain way? Is it from um, an organisation who's got very strong feelings about things without actually looking at the data? So again. Look, look at lots of information as much as you can to verify the sources. Is the site trying to tell, sell you something? Um, are they looking to make profit? Do they benefit, benefit from you thinking a certain way? Sort of goes with the previous point. Um, often you might see something that looks like a news story, but actually it's just an advert for a company, but they've put it in a particular way that makes it look like it might um, it might be a genuine news story, but they're trying to persuade you to purchase products or or look at um, particular things in a in a 
way that benefits their company. Avoid emotions and extremes. So inflammatory language is trying to get your attention and probably isn't providing quality information. We can see how that that sort of goes back to the Daily Mail example um, and the newspaper examples there. You can, the language is very emotive and um, really try is, is headlines. It's attention grabbing. That's what it's, it's set out to do, isn't it? And be wary of clickbait, which is a similar thing. It's those headlines that um, sound really intriguing and, and really basically just to get clicks on websites and things. So and actually this read the story, not just the headline is the message there. And just double check and read around. So do your research. So where to look for information? So this this might seem fairly obvious, but we do recommend that you start with library search and the resources found via the online library area of StudyNet. So these will be um, proper academic resources that we've sourced to uh, to further your studies, uh, reputable, often peer reviewed academic journals and databases. Google Scholar is good to read around topics. This is always a good hint to remember if you're not familiar with getting to Google Scholar through StudyNet, but we do recommend that you go to StudyNet, then to the online library um, and you can search for Google Scholar. Either through your business toolkit or through uh, a link called the A to Z list of search sources. It will then recognize you as a University of Hertfordshire staff member or student and then will you'll be granted access to any articles it finds that we have subscriptions to. So don't just open another tab and go to Google Scholar. Always go through um, university through the online library page. Um, and there are a lot of good resources online. We do know that, you know, the Internet is a great place to find information. We're not trying to put people off doing their research online, but just always use the prompt mnemonic to make sure that it's reliable and accurate. So just a reminder, that's look at the presentation, the relevance, the objectivity, what methods they've used, the provenance and timeliness of the, the source that you're looking at. So an obvious place to look as well is on Library Skill Up, the Canvas module that the library team have put together. And there is an evaluating unit with a lot of this information already on there. If you're not familiar with Library Skill Up, this is the address that will get you there. So go.hearts.ac.uk library skill up. And then this little screenshot here actually outlines the thinking critically area of the evaluating unit. So you can see already that there are pages that we've put together all about detecting bias, censorship and fake news. If I just open the evaluating unit. I can show you an overview of what's already contained in there. So um, underneath the evaluating introduction, we've got subsections. Um, making it easy to break it down and find the information that you need. And these pages are not very long and contain um, text as well as video and links to other websites and other resources to really help you start thinking properly about evaluating, um, not just in terms of fake news and misinformation, but also just generally um, it's a good thing to get into the habit of doing to critically or to think about the, the sources that you're looking at. Um, some people, some students might be asked to look at primary and secondary sources. And if you're not sure about what those are, then we have pages dedicated to um, explaining what the difference is between a primary and a secondary source. And then we get down to our critical evaluation area and thinking critically area. So again, this is just like an overview of what we've spoken about this morning already. Um, but the thinking critically bit is quite nice. The detecting bias page, if I just open that. 
it gives you a bit of an idea about what we've already got on here. So we've got bias or differing viewpoints. And then it talks about textbooks or academic journals and websites, um, the type of thing that they might have in there. Tips again about how to detect uh, bias and then things that you should be asking yourself with examples of um, journal articles and books all talking about the issue of global warming, but all written from very different perspectives. So again, this is this is just a good page to demonstrate um, what we've been talking about this morning and it already exists here on Library Skill Up. So if you get a moment, I would suggest that you look at these pages. I'm just going to look at the next one as well, which is about censorship, something we've not spoken about this morning, but it all ties into the same um, topic. Uh, again, it gives you a definition or a, about what censorship is and then gives you some links through to um, other organisations that uh, talk about internet censorship um, and more information further down. And then the next page is about uh, fake news. So um, I, this covers everything we've spoken about this morning, but it's got a couple of different graphics on here um, that help you uh, explain how to spot fake news. So covering some of the things we've already spoken about, this one in particular, read beyond, that's probably a bit small for you to see on your screen. I think I can click on it. So you can you can read beyond the headlines here. Um, it's sort of what I was saying previously, just uh, this is all about clickbait, but also those quite emotive headlines that you see either online or in print. Um, read beyond those and make sure that you get the whole story. Check the author, check the date. It's all um, fairly self-explanatory and um, it's the same message being portrayed through all of these uh, sites. But basically, it's just a reminder. It's another little way to, to help you uh, remember how to spot fake news. Uh, there's another really good graphic here as well. This goes into much more detail. Again, you can click on the image to zoom in and see clearly the detail. Um, but 10 types of misleading news. So you can have a look there again um, in your own time and have a look at what's specifically might be um, mm -hmm. misleading in terms of fake news, um, not just sort of uh, yeah. misinformation. Yeah. I'm not sure who's on the call that isn't muted, but if somebody could mute themselves because there's a lot of, there's a lot of background noise going on. Thank you. OK. So if I just go back to the slides. Here we're going to finish off with a few slides um, um, directing you to some useful links that you might want to think about um, following up beyond this session. So LinkedIn Learning, which is available to all university staff and students, have a couple of good um, online learning on there. So on the uh, Ask Hearts page here, there is a link to show you how to get to LinkedIn Learning. So it's this web address here, and then you just need to sign in with your university username and password. And then you can get to these uh, courses, one called Spotting Misinformation Online and one called Uncovering Fake News. Um, they might sit uh, there might be sections within another course about something else on a very similar topic, but um, it's useful to have a look at them because you can see how relevant it is, not just in terms of doing research for your assignment, but also going forward in your career or, um, uh, you, know, you know, you need to be able to critically evaluate things in your profession as well as in your um, studies. So it's a, it's a really good thing to go off and maybe have a little bit of um further learning following on this session and see what other uh, people have to say about the topic as well. And then the BBC website also has a couple of good online learning resources. They're not very long, um, but they're really good at um, explaining fake news, how to spot it again. And this bottom one, how can you be sure what you see online is real, is also a really good resource. 
Um, so I would definitely recommend having a look at those. Uh, if I just show you back on the library skill up module. If I go to units, we have created a page called detecting fake news and misinformation. Um, and so on here we've put the slides as well, so you can download the slides as a PDF. Um, and then those links that I'm showing you in the presentation now will work if you want to get to those links after today's session. There are also some good UK fact checking websites. So the BBC News Service also um, do a uh, they examine facts and claims behind a story. So it's called Reality Check and there's a section on their website um, where they will look at news stories that are coming out and then obviously do a bit of fact checking themselves. So that's that's a, a good one to use. And similarly, the um, Channel 4 News Organisation have also got a fact check blog which works in a similar way that you can access um, and they do a lot of fact checking as well. Um, there's one called Full Fact, which is an independent uh, UK organisation um, that will do a lot of fact checking as well. So you can, um, because it's independent, it shouldn't be biased towards any particular political parties or agendas. Um, and then there's a couple there that are based as well in Northern Ireland and Scotland to incorporate the whole of the UK. Um, they've got their own fact checking independent um, dedicated services to to help you do that. There are also other um, social media sites. There's some there's some on Twitter, so you can just ha have a look around and find if you want to follow some sites on social media that will also um, look at checking facts and things. So there's there's a lot of help and support um, if you're not quite sure where to start with with certain topics and stories. So last question, we're just going to ask you to go to Menti one last time. Um, put, put the code in again. If you wouldn't mind. OK, so if you've managed to log into Menti with the code, it was menti.com, it's all up here and the code, you might still have it open on your browser or your phone. But the code is 93177300. And then we just sort of wanted to gauge. Um, opinions or your thoughts going forward, so go, going forward, I will think more critically, use a fact checking website. Think twice before sharing information. Strongly agree or strongly disagree. So it'd be interesting to see your thoughts on this. Uh, yeah, that's good. So strongly agree, think more critically. Um, it's still changing, but it looks like it, everything's more up in the strongly agree area. We're going to try and think more critically around the sources that you um, look at. There's some very, very simple um, techniques that we've just demonstrated, even just to the point of looking at the URL and seeing what the website, um, what the end bit of the URL is a really good starting place. Um, use a fact checking website. There are lots around and those links are on the, the slides again. So if you want to find those from the library skill up module, you can you can get to those links if you think that will be useful. And think twice before sharing information. That's quite an important one because often we, um, especially with fake news, that's how it spreads. So often. You might see a news story. There was one about um, the rock Dwayne Johnson it said it, he'd passed away and it looked like it was from the BBC website but as soon as you open it you read it for, two, for about 10 seconds and then it prompts you to share it to Facebook or another social media platform before it gives you more information and so that's a sort of a red flag 
a warning. It looks genuinely like it's from the BBC website, but they would never not give you the full information without you having to do something. So the fact that they've had to prompt you to share it to a social media site is a, is a bit of a warning sign and a prompt for you to perhaps think this might not be genuine. Perhaps I won't share it. Um, so that's that's a really good tip there. If anything looks like it's from a genuine website and then it's asking you to share things to social media, it's probably because it's just a bit of fake news that they want circulating. Brilliant. Um, we haven't got any more information to share, but we would like to, if anybody's got any questions or any examples of other good fact checking websites they'd like to share um, or any comments, then we would very much welcome them now. You can put them in the chat if you want to or um, just call out. You don't have to put your microphone on or if there's any questions or things people want to say. So in the chat, um, it, do, it is a real challenge. It does feel um, like, especially with all the, the current climate, with everything going on at the moment, with all sorts of terrible things and, and news being spread via social media. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's important that we all really critically evaluate where we're getting our news stories from. Oh, that's good, Nina. Yeah, if, yeah. do share the resources with students as well. Um, and again, if people have come, have some other ones that they would like to share with us that we can add to these, we will be planning on running this as part of our library uh, skill up group sessions that we do weekly. So um, I think we're going to start doing it in a couple of weeks. So if anybody's got any other suggestions, um, things we possibly should have covered or any other fact checking websites or links that we could include, then do let us know. You're welcome, Theo. Somebody's typing. It's always really is it dramatic effect, isn't it? When people are typing in the chat. Very oh that's good. Thank you. We're, we're glad you found it useful. I think it will just it will change all the time. It's the type of topic that we'll um constantly need updating because I guess websites will always be changing and the info the way that fake news is spread and misinformation is spread will always be evolving. Um but it's the evaluating unit has always existed on Library Skillet, but I'm not sure how much traction it ever got in the past, but it's definitely something that you should uh, use if you're a student or perhaps direct students to use. If you're a, um, a lecturer, that would be really great if you could point people to that evaluating unit. A lot of really good information already exists on there. It's something we should definitely be uh, thinking about all of us. OK, brilliant. I don't think there's doesn't sound like there's going to be any more questions. We've finished a little bit uh, like five minutes earlier. All Graham's typing. Um, but um, you can always contact Ellie, Hayley or myself. Um, if you've got any comments, things that you think we should add. Um, or your information manager, if you're a student, you know who your information manager is for your school, then do um, get in touch with them as well. And they can forward on information to us. Thank you, Sam. Brilliant. Thank you. So we'll we'll hang around for a bit, but but if you want to. Um, yes, I'll stop recording. 
if you want to just uh, ask us some questions.